good afternoon. Our lecture for today would be Introduction to Research, Seeing the Scientific Method, and Identifying Hypothesis. <clears throat> the fundamental concepts of this lecture are outlined here. We will begin by discussing the distinction between two types of epidemiology, descriptive epidemiology, and analytical epidemiology. The second half of the class will focus to a large extent on the concept of analytical epidemiology. This lecture begins by highlights what analytical epidemiology is and how it is distinguished from descriptive epidemiology. A fundamental concept in analytical epidemiology is the exposure and disease model. This model will be re-emphasized here. Empiricism is the notion that empiry is conducted through observation and knowledge, verified through evidence. Determinism is the notion that events occur according to regular laws and causes. The goal of research is to discover this. And skepticism is the notion that any proposition is open to analysis and critique. The scientific method has the following steps. Choose a question to investigate. Then identify a hypothesis related to the question. Then we make testable predictions in the hypothesis. We design an experiment to answer hypothesis questions. We collect data in experiment, then determine the results and assess their validity. Determine if results support or refute your hypothesis. So the scientific method has a suspicion that a factor, this is your exposure, may influence occurrence of disease or a noted health outcome. So these are usually observations in clinical practice, examination of disease outcome patterns. So do subpopulations have higher or lower rates? Or are disease rates increased in the presence of certain factors? Or observations in laboratory research? Or theoretical speculation? For example, the novel coronavirus, a very young virus, so we have lots of things to observe. So for example, you want to know if there is vertical transmission of coronavirus from mother to baby. So what do we do? We observe in clinical practice if the patient is a coronavirus carrier, what are the chances that we will have a baby that would be coronavirus positive as well. And if there is documentation that there is indeed transmission, so there is vertical transmission, then we could conclude that there is vertical transmission of coronavirus from mother to baby. And then we identify variables you are interested in. So exposure, so this is the risk factor, protective factors, variables or treatment, and then outcome. Such that we formulate a specific hypothesis and frame a hypothesis which seeks to answer a specific question about the relationship between an exposure and an outcome. So for example, would not wearing masks or face shield and you go out for a, lo uh, for, uh, for a long period or time or you have exposure to a COVID positive patient, what are the risks that you or the chances that you would have a coronavirus positive RT-PCR compared to a person who is exposed but, did, but had a face mask or face shield or whatever protective equipment that may be used. So 
There are a lot of hypotheses and you could frame it in a lot of different ways depending on what topic your research would be on. So usually the basic questions in research would be are exposure and disease outcome linked? So is there any association between them, exposure and disease health, health outcome? This is more pronounced in infectious diseases, but also in non-infectious diseases such as hypertension and diabetes. So the next step is to design a study. So there are a lot of study designs. We will review them in a later lecture. So usually it's a case series, cross-sectional, case control, cohort, and randomized controlled clinical trials. You will know the differences of each as we go along this module. So association. So from the results of your study, does a statistical relationship exist between two or more events, characteristics, or other variables? Hence, you will ask, is there a statistical relationship or association between exposure and disease outcome. The degree to which the rate of disease or outcome in persons with a specific exposure is either higher or lower than the rate of disease or outcome among those without that exposure. That is statistical association. The scientific method assesses validity of association. So does the observed association really exist? Is it valid? Or are there alternative explanations for the association, such as chance, bias, and confounding, which we would learn also in later lectures of this module. So for hypothesis, this is to shape and guide a research study in terms of identification of study sample size, what issues should be involved in data collection, the proper analysis of the data, and data interpretation. So to formulate a hypothesis, we frame the hypothesis in a form that is testable, and then we test the hypothesis. So hypothesis formulation are usually observations from literature. So we review PubMed on a specific area, natural experiments, multinational comparisons, descriptive studies, and creativity. So for example, this would be cervical cancer. So if you would see the different countries with incidence and um, mortality of cervical cancer, you could write down a number of observations and then we could test the hypothesis. So infectious and chronic diseases show great variation from one country to another. So for example, the coronavirus, how it behaves in different countries could be compared and how it varies and what demographic, demographics it affects are an interesting point to look at. So some differences may be attributed to a different factors such as climate, cultural factors, diet, and genetics. So we have our descriptive study designs and these are usually used to help formulate hypothesis. So we have our case series approach. This identifies the experience of a group of patients with a similar diagnosis or identify the experience of a group of individuals with an exposure in common. So for example, we could look at a case series of individuals affected by coronavirus. So these patients or individuals may be identified from a single or multiple source. There is also a population survey approach. 
This describes issues related to disease or exposure in populations. They usually rely upon routinely collected data from established surveillance or notifiable disease systems. So there is a unique component. They usually identify the characteristics of an issue from a representative sample of the population. So there are three essential characteristics that we look to measure in descriptive studies, and these are person, place, and time. So there are person factors such as age, gender, race, ethnicity, genetic predisposition, comorbidities, diet, exercise, and smoking, the risk-taking behavior of the individual, education, occupation, and socioeconomic status. So for place, since disease does not occur at random, where is the disease especially common or rare? And what is different about those places? So geography would be affected by residence, occupation, climate, geology, population density, economic development, nutritional practices, and medical practices. And time. Since disease does not occur at random, how does disease frequency change over time? And what other factors are temporarily associated with these changes? So we, we are sincerely hoping that over time, herd immunity will set in and new cases of coronavirus could decrease, etc. So time of the day. Time since an event, date of onset, age, seasonality, and temporal trends could be looked into. So we should always remember the elements of the scientific method. And discoveries or hypotheses are sometimes resisted because they seem counterintuitive. So this is your hypothesis framing. Traditionally, your null hypothesis is H0, so this is your assume, and your alternative hypothesis is your H sub 1. So case series in practice, so description of clinical epidemiologic characteristics of a number of patients with a given disease. They are usually a consecutive set of clinical cases of disease or health issue. So we analyze cases together to learn about the disease. So we have to be careful as results do not demonstrate temporal relationships. So for example, your Nile hypothesis states that there is no association between the exposure and disease of interest. Your alternative hypothesis would then be there is an association between the exposure and disease of interest beyond what might be expected from random error alone. So another type of framing would be looking at the best estimate of the risk of disease in those who are exposed compared to those who are unexposed. So this moves away from the simple dichotomy of yes or no for an exposure disease association to the estimated magnitude of effect irrespective of whether it differs from the null hypothesis. So these are ways to express hypothesis. We suggest possible events. So for example, the rate of survival will increase after surgery. So another would be suggest relationship between specific exposure and health-related event. So a high cholesterol intake is associated with the development of coronary heart disease. Another way to express hypothesis would be to suggest cause-effect relationships. So cigarette smoking is a cause of lung cancer. 
So there would be one-sided versus two-sided hypothesis. A one-sided example would be helico helicobacter pylori infection is associated with increased risk of stomach ulcer. A two-sided example would be weightlifting as associated with risk of lower back injury. So there would be two directions. So guidelines for framing hypothesis would be to state the exposure to be measured as specific as possible and state the health outcome as specifically as possible as well. Okay? So for example, eating junk food is associated with the development of cancer is a poor framing of a hypothesis. How to improve it would be to make it more specific what kind of cancer and what kind of food, etc., etc. So this is a good example of hypothesis. So the human papilloma virus subtype 16 is associated with the development of cervical cancer. So formally, test the identified hypothesis in a research study. The study should follow a specific plan or protocol. Study designs direct how the investigation is conducted and allows for the translation of a conceptual hypothesis into an operational one. So usually, when it's it is proof, it's disappointing. So this is penned by Newton. Disappointment is when a beautiful hypothesis is destroyed by an ugly fact. Okay. Thank you. So for your assignment. Uh, you already have your topics, so I want it again to be individual, then we will compare your hypothesis. So for your topic, make a null and alternative hypothesis to be discussed in tomorrow's session, 5 o'clock p.m. Thank you, and please do subscribe to our channel for more lectures on preventive medicine and community health. Thank you.